All right, guys, welcome back to the WTA Europe Open Qualifier. We've just had Alex go through to day number two, and he will be playing Crane tomorrow in the semifinals. But up now we have Fallen Remote versus Kalman. Now, me and Raven know Fallen Remote from him entering some of our own tournaments when we used to be tournament organizers. But Kalman is a bit of a mystery, but I did find out a little bit about him. Uh, he's actually a German player, so, you know, Germany's got someone representing them. Yeah, it's uh, pretty good. And how many times did he have on his stream as legend? 33 times legend. Now, an he's an animal. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's pretty reasonable, I guess, isn't it? Reasonable. It's not too bad. <laughs> how, does, how does a man have a patience to get legend <laughs> that many times? Like, yeah, honestly. And it shows his consistency as a player as well. Um, you know, I expect to see some pretty, pretty good play overall. You know, one, again, that we've said before, to fight through this kind of massive bracket through loads of good players. Um, and then to hit legend, like just every season forever <laughs> then like that's pretty it's pretty reasonable so i'm quite excited to see and on the other end as you said we know follow remote a bit we've seen him in the the sort of the scene of all, a lot of the online cups and such and he's a strong player as well likes to put a few of his own quirks into the deck so that'll be definitely interesting to see if that comes out i mean follow remote did go through a phase where he thought he was going to quit the game he was on away gaming with Cy I think Cypher and Skip were both on that team. Uh, that team no, is no longer exists. So we had uh, some players at his disposal kind of practice hard with. And he did. He I remember he announced that he's you know he needs to quit Hearthstone for like other things. And some players do you know may have like real life commitments whatever. But he's back. He decided to just qualify for this tournament instead. Yeah. Never mind. Not gonna bother. I'm I gonna play go this. To China. You yeah. Know. Why not? Why not? If so you can do that, fair enough. <laughs> so Fallen Remote is back. With a vengeance, I guess. You know, he has an opportunity here to not only win $8,000, but also qualify for China. Kalman, uh, Kamlin, sorry. Kalman Cal just seems to flow more for me. But Kamlin, you know, he's, a, like you said, a 33 X legend player. He's also a consultant as well when he's not farming ladder <laughs> yeah, when he's not destroying people on ladder and stealing their points. Maybe he's a ladder consultant. Oh, huh? Yeah, yeah. Come I mean, he's on, maybe, times. maybe. <laughs> so let's look at these guys' lineup. So we're going to see a Mage Paladin Warrior coming from Fallen Remote. And from Camlin, we're going to see Druid, uh, Hunter, and Paladin. So Paladin, Druid, and Hunter have been super popular in this event. But also, you know, Warrior and Mage have been sneaking in a few decks here and there. So, you know, the, the, the lineups from these players uh, are quite consistent. No Shamans, no Priests, no Rogues. Yeah, but we do see it's Mage versus Paladin for the opening game, which is really interesting. We can see that, yes, Secret Paladin, but with a... Uh, they follow the rules. Yeah, you know, that's a bit that's a bit different. Don't only see that. Alder Peacekeeper does find its way into the kind of more mid-range variants of the Paladin. I mean, the, the mid-range Secret Paladin has a lot of ways it can be built. I mean, Tice uh, got second place at Star Ladder with a Zombie Chow... Uh, mid-range secret paladin so we use the zombie chows to gain even more early game board presence and uh, it really helped him uh, kind of get to where he got with it whereas other players like to bulk out their mid-ranges with uh, elder peacekeepers and yeah. sludge belchers I mean, personally, I like to go either way. You would play Secret Pile, though you play Midrange Pile, then. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm not into the whole hybrid thing <laughs> in the deck. But Whereas on the flip side, we see Fallen Remote's Mage, which looks like Tempo Mage or Casino Mage, depending on what we come out. But Mana Worm, Unstable Portal, pretty nice. But then going on to Dr. Boom, maybe not so fantastic of a of a uh, third card to draw. And Mirror Entity, at least it's on curve, right? Mm. You know, at least there's a, there's a good turn well three play met. coming up. Whereas gammon has got... Pretty reasonable hand. The thing is with Mana Worm, Mana Worm very much influences uh, how strong the Temple Mage can lead. Uh, Mana Worm is a, such a powerful card, but without much else to follow up, I mean, Unstable Pull will let him trade at least, but. Here we this go. Hand, Sorry. Unstable Portal time. And, oh, okay. That's not that great, actually, for the Tempo Mage, because normally the whole the Mage like uses up a lot of its cards quickly because, you know, like, has, like Flame Cannon, Arcane Missiles, all very cheap. So you don't normally have to float mana and hold on to cards for a while. So although the Mountain Giant's actually reduced because of the portal, he might have a problem of, like, I mean, if you look at his turn now, he probably wants to Mana Worm Ping or just Mirror Entity, but then next thing he wants to play Shredder. So... Dropping it on, say, turn five or six, it might come down. It's still not terrible. 
for, for a portal, but not it's nothing like crazy. But Camlin has a god curve. Yeah. It, you know, into Master now, be able to clear up the second man alone, then into Shredder, then into Haunted Creeper Hero Power Avenge, into Mysterious Challenger. It's just one of those. Oh, oh Spell We're not going to see it, unfortunately. The Shredder's going to go down, but Spell Slinger's definitely an exciting card. And, uh, you know, see what. There's some really fun situations you see with that card come out. But looking at the Paladin's hand now, as he said, it's so strong. And with cards like Shredder and then a Giant, there's. The secrets become really powerful versus the uh, versus the mage because it's not like other classes that can maybe face tank the secret to then get rid of the two one that spawns. Um, instead, you know they've got to use minions, and if there's just a giant on the board, then that giant's attacking for eight against a one health minion. That's really rough. And he gets locked out by stuff like uh, noble sacrifice, and the owl comes with a shred of soul fortune. And look at that. Mechanical play right there. Yeah, right shredder in the, in the middle. That's what everyone likes to see. Yeah. I'm sure Twitch chat approve. Yes. You see, so many people get upset <laughs> when Shredder's dug in the middle. I think you just. Ha I, I, I think Fallen Remote almost has to slam the giant now because if not, he's gonna play two more cards. Uh, I suppose Spell Slinger gives him another card back, but I think because he's falling behind, he needs to put something crazy on the board, and the giant's definitely that. Um. Paladin would be a little bit surprised to see a Mountain Giant just randomly pop out on turn 5, but also, again, he's got such a good hand, he can just drop uh, the Belcher. Like, Belcher's an yeah, amazing Whatever, topic. yeah. It's not terrible. So the the Giant will run into the Belcher unless a spell deals with it, and then on 6, Mysterious Challenger comes down, and then the Noble Sacrifice oh. is there exactly. as well. And it spells all sorts of trouble for this mage, but Spell Slinger may be the card that... Uh, Swings things, you know. Uh, we've seen it before. Tracking into fireball from jab against yeah. Trump in the in the nationals. Uh, spell singer can have a huge influence on. And Hank also flick it the other way. He could actually give the other player a really strong card, and he maybe draw a little bit dead. Double frostbolt. It's it's not great. Still, he can still use one to clear the one two maybe, but it doesn't quite cleanly clear up everything uh well the belcher fully because the spell you want to kind of drop the spell slinger as well and it is a far side oh, okay and an execute yeah so as we can see sometimes spell slinger causes some issues for yourself the fact that now you can just run the one one in and execute is huge does he even need to i kind of just like the shredder into the three four maybe not even that maybe face secret uh, mysterious challenger face I mean, Challenger is going to get mirror entities, so he could potentially go for Creeper into oh, that's say, true, Avenge, yeah. uh, into Execute, into Dude. Uh, you're going to see what comes out of Shredder first. A Trog, which is, uh, well, a Trog of some kind, <laughs> which is actually a little bit useful against these mages because they spend, like, have a lot of low cost spells. So we'll probably force a Frostbolt on top of it. So he's, he's weighing up now. Can I give him a 6-6 six, six and will it matter? I don't think you should at this point. You can be play a bit patient. I, I think you're quite far ahead. Yeah, I think he's okay to actually play Creeper, play a few of his secrets out. And he may not need to play Challenger quite yet anyway because he has Dr. Boom to follow up next turn. And he'll already have some secrets on the board. And Redemption will most likely, unless a ping goes onto a 1-1, one, one, uh, spawn the token again. So again, giving him additional pressure. Uh, Dr. Boom... It's going to be something we might see come uh, next, but Repentance may be in the back of his mind. Yeah, the issue here is that if one remote could play Dr. Boom, which is fine, but when your opponent has a bigger board than you, you slam Dr. Boom to try and come back, but then there's potentially Redemption down, and also your opponent just drops his own Dr. Boom, so then he's evened your turn, and he still has loads of minions to actually trade away and you deal with the bomb, so... We are going to see the uh, Sorcerer Apprentice, and he's just going to go for it. Let's far sight and see what he can draw. Is it going to be Fireball? Oh, 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 missiles. oh man. it would have been zero anyway because of the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Oh, that's that's should be a video of when Spell Slinger goes wrong. Ooh, I don't like this. I would definitely want to ping a dude first just to test for redemption. And for yeah. Romo, does take back that Frostball. He holds back to that spell. Oh, wait, no. Oh, oh um... So he go. can still arcane like missile ping, right? He can still ping it off. It's a redemption. That's true, that's true. And yeah. I think what he wanted to do, well, this was actually a decent play. What he wanted to do is stop the Avenge going onto the Trog. Because yes. that would have been a problem. 
he would have needed ultimate RNG to deal with that. So that's actually a really heads up play from Falling Remote there. Oh, oh there and, and he just can just aim his arcane missiles by Lux Things, which is pretty pretty okay. And now the Frostbolt's clear at the 4 3. Strong play, but after all that and all that sort of havoc, your opponent just drops Dr. Boom. And then you go, oh, I'll drop my Dr. Boom. And he goes, ah, oh, but I have Mysterious Challenger. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a little bit rough. And we've seen no Flame Wakers yet from Fallen Remote. The big which card. Is a, yeah, nature. which actually makes a massive impact. Because you saw all those like cheap tokens. Imagine if you had Flame Waker, RK Missile, Frostbolt. The game just changes then. So Flame Waker, being, like I said, being the key card. And I think it's a bit too late to find Flame Waker now. Flame oh, Waker it doesn't matter do anymore, it's yeah. It's not going to make enough of a difference. And kind of the high-end stuff from Casino Mage is usually stuff like Ragnaros, Archmage, Antonidas. We see a Doctor Or Boom. Ronin as well. Ronin, yeah. This is, it's an interesting card, uh, which I haven't seen that much. Uh, I think uh, Kalman or Kamlin is... Uh, Kalman just seems so natural for me. So, <laughs> so Kamlin is kind of thinking... Does he just go for a clear here? But you just slammed Dr. Boom, I think. Yeah, I think the challenge is a bit odd because what are you gaining that much? You can kill the Apprentice regardless. And Ace, do you want a 1 1 to hit the 2 1? The, the competitive spirit? Eh, not the competitive spirit, sorry, the uh, as a hover over competitive spirit, the noble sacrifice. Um, interesting play because now Dr. Boom's a little bit better because the Fallen Remote gets the initiative with Dr. Boom a little bit. But then again, the Paladin can actually get the buff of 1-1 one, one onto the Mysterious Challenger and just trade straight up and then drop his own Dr. Boom. So I suppose, you know, th there's pros and cons to each way. Yeah, I agree as well. I mean, I think both plays were fine. Uh, so we dropped the Dr. Boom. Like I said, easy trade here. Combat Spirit's going to make things even better. So perhaps actually... Uh, this was the right play because now he has even more stuff to kind of trade. He didn't even have to trade his challenger now. Uh, does he just win? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, he, oh just, yeah, wins. he just wins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, man, that's, that's always a good play. When you can kill your opponent, you, you just kill him. You don't worry about anything else. And as they say, Mysterious Challenger just wins you games. And there is evidence right there. <laughs> so, so you heard it from Aquavlad that Mysterious Challenger, put it in your deck and you will win at Hearthstone. Just win games. It's great. <laughs> like, why would you not play that card or that deck for a matter? <laughs> so 1-0 go into uh, Camlin. Sorry, yeah. Camlin. I, I will get it right. I will get it right. Go into Camlin. And the full remote's got some work to do. But, you know, the mage is going to come back and it does find its way into the druid matchup. So this is generally a good matchup for the mage. Unless uh, this druid <laughs> is slightly aggressive. Um, Yeah, not just slightly aggressive, <laughs> but look what else this druid is packing. Oh, okay. That's not too bad. This is, So this is, uh, you can tell the sort of aggressive stance from the Druid by the Fell Reaver currently in the Mulligan. He throws it away and we see a Clockwork Gnome, which again, you've got to give a nod to. This isn't like in Mage where the Gnome part uh, can change over to the to the Flame Waker, so the extra part buff. It's, um, it's going to be Mech Mage because there's no other benefit for the Druid to really gain parts. And not only that, I mean, Mech Druid is something you don't see a lot of. Um, Dog was a player who I used agree. it quite a lot. Uh, the Mech Druid oh. versus Casino Mage matchup, I'm going to be honest, it's not a matchup I see every day or no. even played before. So it's going to be very interesting to see but how this works. Look at Fallen Remote's hand. This was an odd play. He really wants that coin. Would you not have coined out a Sorcerer's Apprentice and then just cast Arcane Missile? Yeah, I suppose so. Maybe we're missing something on our end. But yeah, that's, uh, that's a very good point. Yeah, that was an interesting choice. Maybe he just didn't really think about it. A bit stressed that he comes up against Mech Druid in a in a pretty high level tournament. But this is when you see Mech decks draw everything but Mechs or minions. Double Savage Raw, double Swipe, and the Stealth Spare Part. You know, Are we going to see a Hero Power this turn or a very ruthless Savage Raw? He's going to assert dominance, hit Savage Raw, two to face. He needs to play Savage Raw, hit him in the face, and then say, like, my greetings or something. Do you yeah. know, get, get in confidence. the Confidence. Confidence. I like it. But unfortunately, we, we are going to see him just go for the uh, go for the hero power. Probably the safer play and the play to actually try and win the game. Uh, we are going to see the Apprentice come down, coin into the second Apprentice to get a free unstable portal. Uh, 
maybe this removal is going to now help with double swipe on the board. So maybe this is what he was actually going for then. He was working yeah, maybe he's trying to work. Ooh, Ooh Murlocs! Mm. Let's make swipe better for the druid. Um, I kind of wanted to see uh, arcane missiles as well, man. Just like three to face. If it, one of them has to go high progressive. I want to see this. But the swipe's going to be super strong. Fallen remote, probably a little bit upset. That's out of all the minions you can draw from uh, from the portal, not the best one. But he's got loads of options as well. He goes to spell slinger coil. Versus Frost Shock. That's pretty impressive. That's one of the most lackluster spell things <laughs> I've ever seen. Two cards which are just... No, they're not useless, but they're just kind of... You want stuff like Recycle and Tree of Life. Yep. You want these crazy cards. And what do we get? A, a Frost Shock and this a, a Mortal This is pretty reasonable that Swipe deals with this board. He can still play the uh, Clockwork Gnome. The Clockwork Gnome, yes, you're against a Mage. Probably going to get pinged. But then that reduces the Mage's mana to th three for the you know, actual playing cards out of his hand. And you still gain a part again. Um, another option is a Spider Tank, Frost Shock maybe. but Or just Spider Tank, Hero Power down onto the 3-1. Um, we'll see what he does. He could even Frost Shock and play the, the Gnome. Let's go for the Hero Power, which is interesting. Because he knows he can get pinged off. Or more importantly, Mortal Coiled. He knows he's going to get Mortal Coiled, so yeah. <laughs> he wanted to play around that. Mortal Coil is actually going to do some work here with the Flame Waker. He can trade it, well, he can run into the Spider Tank, and then he could Mortal Coil it and uh, get some Flame Waker shots. Yeah. But the only issue with that is you do play the Swipe quite a lot, so maybe it's, it, going for the Arcane Missiles first is good. Yeah, there's a, that's five damage. Like, five damage, you need three to hit. Um, <laughs> that that is Fallen Remote being being pretty aggressive. He seemingly he can't aim his abilities that are RNG and Hearthstone, and they all just hit face. And even though he killed the minion, the flame walk hit face again. Uh, you're so playing the wrong deck here, Fallen Remote. If yeah. you cannot aim your RNG with this deck, you shouldn't be playing it. <laughs> like he's. To he's be fair, not good at the to be right? fair, you're open to swipe, but you've done a lot of damage to that druid's face. That druid isn't going to look good the next morning, is he? Um, and. It's kind of weird because the scientist not being down yet in a normal druid matchup seems really bad because you want those mirror entities because it's so good versus say mid-range druid because all the minions are very beefy. But against mech druid, as we can see as well, like the mirror entity might not matter too much. Um, maybe as the game goes on more, but the odds on a mech deck having cheap minions to just like eat the mirror entity are pretty high, and he's just gonna go for it, Fell Reaver. He had a. I was thinking then, like swipe is super obvious. But Felreaver's probably going to be able to tank a lot of these This shots. is when he fight. Ooh. Ooh, okay. I kind of still just like Fireball and the Flame Waker to hit face twice again. That'll be pretty, pretty good. Well, if his RNG is anything last turn, I wouldn't go Flame uh, flame Cannon Mirror well, Entity. The, well, the, yeah, the, the, the Flame Cannon's the safety precaution around the, uh, the Flame Waker not hitting the... Oh, hey, really? this Flame Waker! He should be in a Hunter deck. Just full smock. He, he has no cares in the world other than punching you in the face with fire. If I ever meet Fallen Remote and he says, let's go to the casino, I'm just going to, no, no, no Fallen This is Remote. good. He clears the minion and pushes face for even more damage. The Druid is now on 12, and again, with double Savage Roar in hand, it's just so, so like, funky. His hand to try and not deal with the minions that are on the board. He does draw into Spider Tank, which is something. Um, I think Spider Tank Swipe is the only realistic play he can make to stay in this game. He has just seen a Savage, uh, a savage Roar. He has just seen a Fireball as well. So then that's one less card that's going to burst you down straight from the Mage's hand. But imagine if the Flame Cannon wasn't used and he kept it. He would have a perfect answer to the Flame Cannon with a Shredder as well. But then so Flame Waker wouldn't have gone face though, which makes no sense. You are obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you're the guy who goes all in on the poker table every hand. Like, yeah, you just like play aggressive, <laughs> that's how you win. If you, if you lose the first hand, right, just put more money down. Yep. Keep going in. Why I don't go to casinos anymore. Um, I just favor Casino Mage instead. Um, the mirror entity does go down for the mage, so that's kind of that's good for Fallen Remote. Sort of another minion for the druid to deal with, as well as trying to establish a board because Fallen Remote is still on 27 health. Like he isn't close to dying yet, and it's not like yes, double savage draw is nice, but not as nice as when you have actually some minions on the board. Um, we need some power plays here for uh, Camlin going forward. Like he needs to draw that Doctor Boom, another Fell, maybe even a druid with the claw. This um, yeah. mirror entity is going to be soaked up really nice, but it gives him a spare part for another flame waker. So. Yeah, I think he has to silence the shredder, sacrifice the 
uh, spider tank into the shredder and then hero power down the 2-1. He needs a board to just stick so he can start pressuring damage and he can't afford to leave Fallen Remote with any minions left on board. He has to just take the hit. It's, yeah, it's super risky leaving a mage like at he, that low health. It'll leave the druid on 6 health oh, yeah, if he sure. doesn't clear it. Ooh, interesting. So he's going for the oh. face tank. I wait, what? I d don't understand. Um. Hmm. Aqua. Uh, he <laughs> miscounted. He yeah. could hero power. That's my only. That's pretty rough. I mean, it, he's not going to get too punished for it, but he's definitely not putting himself. I thought he was going for savage raw face and just going right all in. Like, you know, Savage Raw Face, and then hopefully he either trades away so he doesn't kill me, or Savage Raw Face again. But um, this is really scary. I'm I'm just still confused. Because he clears the board. How does the Druid come back? And he puts five damage on his face now, so he's down to three health. Frostbolt will... Oh, actually, he's just, he's just going to clear. So he's protected Shredder. So he's forcing a trade here from the 2-4, or he's forcing a hero power. Oh, what are and these draws? <laughs> this is Mech Druid draws. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah, this is really rough. The taunt, sort of helps ish but maybe it doesn't actually because he, he has to run too far into the shredder because he can't take the damage and leave himself on I one or yeah. he hits concede and uh wow that was an interesting game a little bit rough but you know let's, let's see how it goes we didn't have the traditional swingy rampy start that the mech decks generally have yeah. like mech mage and mech shaman you when you have the kind of Drop your hand on turn three with a coin with a double like mech warper into a Noyatron and server stuff. He never had that. He had Savage Raw, Savage Raw, swipe, swipe, yeah. like nothing. So even though uh, we saw that deck fall short, uh, it's hard to criticize uh, Camelon because he had such an awful hand. Yeah, and again, the double Savage Raw. He can just at least get rid of them. Yeah, he needs to throw those away. And then he alternate draws the other two backwards. And uh, he ends up with double Savage Draw again. The Innovate's almost certainly going to be a keep. A, a turn one um, Spider Tank's, Spider pretty, tank's cool. pretty nice. Uh, we can see that this warrior looks like Control Warrior. Um, which, again, the Druid's got a much better start this time. But the Control Warrior excels at removing uh, early mins and removal in general. And if there's the second the Control Warrior stabilizes just, just for one turn, he can just claw it back a lot. So there's a lot of things he could do here with that innovating coin. He could just coin out the aspirant, try and bait out a war axe, see what where he goes from there, and then he can do some other stuff later on uh, with his innovate. Or he could go for like kind of a an all-in kind of innovate uh, the spider tank and coin out the clock uh, cogmaster. So there's a lot of kind of different directions. Or he could just play cogmaster and say, "Do you have a fiery war axe?" Yeah. And the answer is. No. Yep. I think this is an uh, interesting play actually because personally I would have liked to have gone hyper aggressive because there's nothing higher in it on his curve. Now we, now he's pulled the Druid of the Claw, that might change a few things, but you give multiple targets to Fiery War Axe and then you always stay one minion ahead of Fiery War Axe. So that's how you build the board. But he did just play a bit risky and it paid off. The, uh, the Warrior could only armor up here. I would like to see Coin innovate Spider yeah. Tank now just so he can squeeze in free damage from the Cog and he's going to go for it. And and look at those targets. What what does the warrior do now? There's three targets on the board on turn three. Um, this is pretty rough. So do you kill the mech to stop the damage, or do you kill the spiral to stop the ramp? That is your question. What you got to think about is the potential turn four plays from a uh, mech class, uh, and there isn't well, the shredder, and that's really the only turn four from a druid at least that you're gonna see. So um, I would probably value the mech. It's it's really risky. So you you try you kill the mech, and then if they've just got another mech in hand, you're back to square one. But uh, but I would personally go for the mech because the turn four play could be shredder, but that's worst case scenario. It's not like versus a mech mage where goblin blast mage can come out and that can just wreak havoc. It's the difference between taking six damage next turn from the mech and the cogmaster, or taking three damage next turn potentially if there's no mech from the two uh, yeah. the two three. But this is great because it locks out. The Tinker Town Technician yeah. from giving the spear part become the 4 4. So now he made him make a weaker play. Oh, Ooh, Bash is a nice draw there. Yeah, and this is the new, the newer version of Control Warrior we've been seeing recently. Um, I think Fireback called it. Uh, I was with him at the weekend. Fireback called it the Smash and Bash Warrior. It is Smash uh, and Bash. Basically, it just it runs Bash and still all the usual removal as well. So it's another two cards that, again, look 
We're on turn 5 for the aggressive mech druid. The warrior is above 30 life. It's not the position you really want to be in. The druid does have a you know, couple of minions on the board, but again, no mech. I would, I'd be amazed if he doesn't play the druid of the claw here. And um, whether he plays in charge or uh, bear form is, is the question. Char the charge form obviously open up to a death spite to just straight up remove it. But I think he has to start putting some damage on it, especially because he has savage raw and living roots. It's, it's so tough for this mech deck, simply because he's lost his mech synergy. But not only that, mech druid is not a strong deck. And mm. going against Control Warrior, Control Warrior has uh, been very good recently. Uh, Stan Sifka had a lot of success with it recently. Where and he showed how powerful <laughs> the deck can be with just the inclusion of Justica. Justica Heart yeah. can snowball your house so far out of reach for some of your opponents. It is crazy. And now we have Shield Block available as well with the Slam. We're yeah. all going to come down first, which is great, you know. Get yeah, he, could, he couldn't have actually cleared off the Druid of the Claw with Shield Block Summons. He needed more mana to hero power. Probably be a little bit upset about the Druid, survive, uh, the, Druid the Claw surviving. And when your opponent says, sorry about that, you know, that's a bit of a... <laughs> Bit, bit of a kick there, but it's still okay. You slam, but Sylvanas on the board might be able to just swap things around a little bit. Yeah, I don't think Fallen Remote's too unhappy. Can I just point out, look how happy those Living Roots are, Living Roots. Um, have you the, seen the, the, the golden versions are so happy. Yeah, if you, the difference between the normal and the golden, the golden ones just look like they're having the time of their lives, and the normal ones just don't. They're just it's like, like a indifferent. forced smile. Yeah, they're just like, mm. yeah. Well, it's like smile for the camera, whereas these are just loving life. Living Groot. So <laughs> Sylvanas coming down here, gonna be able to uh you know, cause some trouble here, maybe force him to I I don't think you need a trade really, kinda of just gone the aggressive here. But no real good play here for Camlin. I mean Savage Rock could put some pressure on his life. He's gonna actually so he's got six, seven, eight. It's eighteen damage, 18. nineteen with hero power. It might be I, worth just yeah, I, I think do it. You are not close to Alex Straza range, so the damage isn't potentially gonna be wasted. I think you Savage Ron now because hopefully you can you could savage run now clear the sylvanas next turn and then play boom yeah for and sure. then and then hopefully you rely on that being enough to push through cuz the druid's now running dry and you're not going to get better turn than four minions at this point with his hand four minions on the board seven draw you you do it you 100% do it i like this so he's taking the initiative here with the aggression he had a slow start but now he can pick up the pace with a savage draw and he's put in full remote on a clock yeah, four, four health. Four health. Very scary. Brawl number two. Oh, wow. Okay. So Sylvanas will definitely steal something or live, and he can armor up. If Sylvanas lives, this game could be just. Could, this game could be foreign remotes. Because if Sylvanas lives, he plays. He has to play Dr. Boom. It's all he's got. And he can armor up and shield block this turn. What? Then, uh, sorry, he can armor up this turn, shield block next turn. And shield Ste slam. Yeah, but it potentially steal the boom. And then like, you just never die then because the Druid's trying to top deck and Aggro Druid top deck and he's nowhere near as strong as mid-range. And as soon as he draws something like Justica, he'll just... Yeah. Wait, what? Oh, he's actually just going Okay. Yeah. I mean, this is fine as well. Is it open to Savage Raw, though? Uh, that'll be six, seven, eight, nine, seven. No, he is out of range of Savage Raw. Um, maybe Savage Raw Swipe would be a problem. But that's okay. Dr. Boom becomes a lot weaker on this turn. So maybe for, you know... If uh, to get back in this game, like you can get some more armor from the shield block, you can do some nice removal, but Dr. Boom becomes a weaker play. And this is where Brawl actually becomes a lot better. It can't kill you with the Boom bots alone, because once Death Rattles, uh, he's got enough health. The problem is, we can see that there's a force of nature. Yeah. So if the bots hit hard, and if they both hit for four, this could be an issue. Um, it could definitely be very risky. And the problem is, if the Sylvanas steals Dr. Boom, fantastic, that's the target you want. But, is a 7 attack minion on when your druid's on 32 health going to change the game much before you die? Maybe not. It's uh, definitely a bit of a scary moment for Fallen Remote. I mean, you could hit a boom bot with Sylvanas and hit it with a weapon, another one, and if it doesn't kill it, but you've got a chance of hitting the 1-1. One -one. So, attack the face here, brawl up, hope the boom bot go. goes your way. Oh, what's it going to do? Oh. One one's gonna be stolen. Okay, definitely not what Fallen Remote wanted. So you want the Boombot to hit the one one here. There we go, and and three. Ooh, just out of range. Yes, yeah, so that's one damage. It's not hard. And the problem is Aggro Druid. Well, at least Mech Druid uh, and aggressive. That's not the one damage though. But we can see Fallen Remote's 
not really got anything to gain more health. Other oh. than the two armor every turn. Not yet. But that, mm, well, so he gets the hero power him down next turn. Uh, he'll probably want to have to, th he's going to have to kill this aspirant. Uh, he, he will be out of range for a short while, but all he takes, all he takes is a good top deck here now. Alex Strauss, I Alex, <laughs> Belcher, anything, and, you know, Grom. Yeah, I, I would, I would play Grom. <laughs> Oh no, you can't armor up, you, you can't armor up. No, armor I wouldn't. Up, don't you? No, if he was on 10 mana, I would slam Grom and go for it. So, we it's taken down. Oh. Oh, he's one off again. Is this? Oh no, 4 5. Nope, that's it. Yeah, he that's lethal. Power. Yeah. He took too much damage, and there's, uh, yeah, there's the force of nature. And it was just a spider tank as well, but what a crazy game. That Savage Raw was pretty Jeez. much game deciding. Building the board up that much, and then um, Fallen Remote not dealing with it quick enough. It's pretty much cost him that game. And this is what Druid excels at when facing the Control Warriors. This is a bad matchup for the Control Warriors just because it was a Druid and Druid uh, can run a train over the world. Double Brawl didn't actually do enough in the end. So even though we found two of his best ways to remove the big board, it, it just wasn't enough. Yeah, and the um, stealing the 1-1 one, one and it actually killing with a boom bot was a problem because he, if he stole the Dr. Boom, then he could have used that to trade with. So it looks like these guys are ready to go. They're not wasting yeah, straight any back time. into the game. Warrior's going to come back out for Fallen Remote. And the Hunter quite, coming. Quite aggressive Balak things. So these guys have tied it up, if I believe. Uh, yeah, I think that's 2-2 two, two now, right? Or is it 2-1? No, I think it's 2-1 to Camlin. We might have a slight problem with the overlay there. I think it was 2-1, because Fallen Remote's only won with his... Tempo Mage. Yeah, with his Tempo Mage. Yes, for sure. So this okay. is actually match point for Camlin now. The 33x legend player. Yeah. The Ladder King himself has but the opportunity to go to day number two here. Yeah, but we do see Fallen Remote started with the Fiery War Axe, which is what he was really in need of last game. Um, so he's put the Fiery War Axe down, cleared off the minion there, and the trap is almost snakes. certainly explosive. Oh, it's snakes. Okay. So he's running snakes and explosive in this deck. Does have a lot of damage to hand. Uh, I guess we just you see the scientist drop down and pulls the second explo uh, the explosive, I guess. So you go to manage two explosive, one snake, right? It might be one explosive, one snake, because no, there's actually uh, another trap in this deck, okay. which we should see. And it's going to be the bear trap once he kills the scientist. So running a, a variety of traps is al always a, a good way to give yourself an edge in tournament mode because. You don't want to be predictable with your traps. Double freezing, mm. kind of mid range or hybrid. If if they f if they make too many good no reads worries, on that, it's team. it's a nuisance. But mixing up your traps with hunters is definitely a good shout here. And look at the aggression coming from uh, Camlin here. Yeah. So there's a lot of lot of pressure on there, like you said. And there's no AOE to actually deal with. Uh, there's no whirlwinds um, or anything like that. No no death spite to get the AOE. There's a brawl for next turn though. So. We could see the Brawl come down, almost certainly, but the issue with Brawl against a deck like this is you've killed 1-1s, one you know, like, the, the damage is almost done at, the, at that point, and you can just slam the Brawl if anything survives, and it's still pretty pre uh, pretty high pressure. The only bonus is he is moving up into turns of Shield Maiden, and he does have Bash and Execute to deal with some of the uh, chunkier minions from the Hunter. So one thing Camlin should consider here is he saw double Brawl last game, so we should be, uh... Know a little bit more patient with developing this board here. Maybe try and bait out a brawl. I mean, I would have quite liked to have seen maybe a bow there, or maybe just an explosive trap hero power, just to see if there is a brawl on five. Because brawl is one of the only ways he really deals with this board efficiently. Because deathbite would have been too slow. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Because deathbite takes a turn to charge up as well, and to be able to death rattle it, unless you deathbite into like fiery war axe or something to cancel it out straight away. But the juggler survived, which is pretty horrendous for Fallen Remote, and this is definitely not going his way. So Animal Companion could be good here, but I quite just like playing the Argent Horse Rider, simply because it has that Divine Shield, and it plays around the slams, and it plays around the uh, the bashes, and squeeze in a hero power there, and, you know, start putting the pressure on. But it looks like he gets the Leoch. Uh, no huffer for him, no piggy. Yeah, it's uh, always Leoch when you don't need it. The, uh, the Huffer would have actually put on a lot of pressure there onto Fallen Remote. So, the Death Bite just too little too late at this point, isn't it? You know, it's not going to uh, 
it's not you're not going to really, really have time to get the whirlwind effect off to really clear anything you can't really afford to take the damage either the bash and hero power shield slam is really nice and having bash being another tool to extend for shield slam is why this deck started picking up a lot more this version of control warrior as well as the slam as well there's a lot of removal you know this uh this deck isn't hybrid actually i tell a lie it's actually it's good old space hunter yeah we see the wargun yeah the wargun infiltrator I say it's still pretty bit of a problem for Fallen Remote. There's a double armor smith, but no whirlwind effect to uh, to really cash in on that. So this is really rough. I am surprised. I suppose he feels safe enough not to shield maiden this turn, and next turn he can shield maiden armor smith with the whirlwind effect. And now he sees that that trap is bear trap, so he's just giving his opponent three extra health and a beast, which is huge because now he can't deal with that. And if there was kill commands in hand. Or a Leroy Jenkins. Jenkins. Um, so that's 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15. That's exact lethal. Oh, no, it's one over because he's got quick shot. But he could have hero powered, right? Leroy oh, Jenkins. Oh, wow. Making a splash back in the scene. The base hunter. Defeat in fall remote. And Mr. 33 X Legend is going to go through to day number two. Crazy. Where he will find his next opponent very soon in the next match. What a crazy game. So fast as well. Like Even with all the armor gain and the brawl, that control warrior just couldn't sustain against the Mechtrude or the Face Hunter. Yeah, and even with the Fiery War Axe, again, there was just... Uh, if, if you're not going to run, uh, obviously, if there's no Whirlwinds available, you really need those uh, the Whirlwind effects from the Death Bite to be effective. But, you know, if you don't draw it, there's not much you can really do, and just it just ran away with him. Maybe if he played Shield Maiden, he could stall out a little bit, but, again, Leroy, not the most common pick, actually. We see it, uh, these plays we don't know as much. Really hard to try and gauge as to what they're going to bring. And Leroy, it's been it was nerfed from from four mana to five mana in like the, the old days of Hearthstone. He's still fight six damage from hand. You yeah. know, it's still it's still a lot of damage and from hand that you actually don't expect on it to have a lot of the time. Another thing with that deck as well, it didn't give too much away at the start. It kind of almost looked like a hybrid hunter with a snake trap. But once we saw that walk, and we definitely knew the agenda. So seeing Leroy was a surprise. Uh, if we saw something like Arcane Golem, we wouldn't have been as surprised, I guess. But, yeah. you know, it's a very strong performance there from Camlin. You know, his, his ladder experience has definitely paid off, especially in the Conquest format, where ladder experience is almost key. Yeah, and really interesting to see his deck choices. I mean, Mech Druid in, in the biggest yeah. tournament of his life. You know, we've seen people bring Mech Druid before to tournaments, and it's performed okay sometimes, you know, so so others. I think Sixo played a, a Mech Druid at one point as well. Dog, Dog is famous. Yeah, for exactly. So, like, and these guys are pretty good. They know what they're talking about. They're not going to bring a deck they don't like um, or don't think can perform, but, you know, bringing it to a tournament this big and maybe not relying as much on the standard, you know, like, best decks at the moment, it's pretty pretty ballsy, and it's, it's paying off. Like, it's some crazy games there. The one way you're going to be able to take out these pros like Crane and Gara is surprising them. You know, that's yeah. the element of surprise, especially in single, single elimination, can be very key to getting a victory. So, you know, Camlin, he's going to go through to day number two, and he will be finding out who his opponent is very soon in the next match. If you'd like to find out more information about WCA, or even just drop us a message on Twitter, be sure to check out the details below. So we're going to have the next game and the last game of the evening coming up very shortly. Have a quick break, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.